Blaine's drilling, I'm gonna bring the flasher, I'm gonna look around and hole hop until I mark some crappies. We're gonna drop down, and we're gonna do a first ice crappie smackdown. My buddy Blaine, here we go. Blaine Zirkin, everybody. Pop one right here, this one's gonna be loaded. Right here? Yeah, big school, big school. Sweet. Boom. I'm seeing, I'm getting more suspended out on these holes, I'm getting a bunch of random suspended marks. Yeah. This one's chasing me. Yeah. We have a lot of Got him. I don't know what it is. Guys, we're hooked up, first fish. It's tiny, super tiny. Tiny? Oh. It's real tiny. <laughs> we, got, <laughs> we got bait right there. Ooh, new mark just showed up near bottom. It's rising up to, oh boy. He's coming up to chow me. Yep, on. Oh, guys, we're stocking up on lake trout bait. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah! Guys, look at that. That is gonna be candy. Uh, we collected some bait fish there. It's gonna be good for pike and lake trout, maybe big walleyes, but for now, we need to keep focused on crappies. So we're gonna keep moving. Probably switch lakes right now, actually, because um, this seems kind of vacant of slab crappies. Lake number two, we're running through the muskeg, and Blaine promised 100 crappies of this spot. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 heads up, heads up. You okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. That, uh... Ice safety. Ice safety. Took one step into the musk egg. Oh, happened very fast. Lake number two, I don't even know if I'm gonna use the footage from lake number one. I caught a couple of Cisco's. We did not catch any crappies, so we were still on the hunt for first ice crappies of 2018. Blaine is drilling and checking. We got about, uh, we've had eight inches of ice so far, six to eight inches, so a lot of ice, but you still gotta be so careful. We accessed through a, through a muskeg area, and the muskeg was quite a bit thinner, so you gotta be so careful. Just because one area is good, you know, muskegs, there could be air bubbles trapped in there, there could be beaver trails and stuff, so just use so much caution. We got about two hours left, we're hoping to get on a couple of crappies, have a fish fry for dinner, so we're gonna get after it. It's but. a cordless drill. Mm -hmm. Blaine is an electrician, he's using his cordless drill. Yep to pop hole, super good for early season. The ice is thin, super lightweight. We got a six inch flight on there. And Blaine's about to Swiss cheese this and I'm about to film him Swiss cheese it and then we're about to catch crappies. Boom. That cage drill is pretty cool. That's the first time I've seen one. Just how light it is, how quick it is. I am in no way uh, endorsed by cage drill. Um, but electric drills in general seem to be changing the industry. I might uh, have to get rid of my gas drill pretty soon. But uh, holes are drilled. We're gonna go check the basin. Uh, fishing basins is a very typical technique for uh, winter crappies. Blaine says this is where they live, so we're gonna give it a shot. These guys were higher too? Yeah, okay, that's good to know. Blaine says they're higher, Dep like every crappie lake's a little different, but some lakes, they will suspend so high, so it's like, don't even drop down unless you mark them. Some lakes, they hug bottom, so you kind of just, that's more of the pattern, but. I'm gonna trust my guide. You marking? Oh, that was a good mark, I just lost it. I was not paying attention. Not paying attention. Oh, cell phones these days, distracting people from the task at hand. On. Oh. Okay guys, we gotta run. Blaine is hooked up with hopefully the first crappie of the day. There we go. Oh, so I got <laughs> <laughs> it's Perfect, hold him up, hold him up. Oh man, it's nothing to brag about, but hey. Dinner. That is dinner. Number one, tell me about it. Give me the play by play. Um, well, two came on the graph, coaxed the one up, one underneath it came up and smacked it. I'm gonna just wipe this lens a little bit. Sorry about that. <laughs> Blaine was <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> that was good. If you can get multiple fish on the screen at once, then there's an aggression factor. Sorry. You get multiple fish on the screen at once, there's an aggression factor. So all of a sudden, there'll be one fish staring at it. He's kind of interested. 
second one comes in and then it changes the mood of the first one. Very similar to dating with guys and girls. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah that's good, that's good. I'm gonna pull my phone out and the fish is gonna eat me. Cause that's how it's been looking so far. That's, what, that's literally why I called Kale back so I get right. Here we go. Sorry Kale. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. On. There we go. First crappie blade. I don't know. I don't know if this one's gonna be too big to eat. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, yes. That's an eater. Get that's it. an eater. Just barely hooked in the snout. Very nice. That is gonna be delicious later tonight. We're rolling. Okay, guys, this is what I'm using. Uh, this is called a quick tip rod. And as you can, they, like a bunch of different brands make rods like this, but super fast tip. You can see how it's very soft tip in the backbone. You could use this for like a nice dead stick rod for walleyes. Awesome rod for crappies because it's all about that light tip. And this is the jig. It's a tungsten jig. I've not used a lot of tungsten jigs, but essentially the main reason people use tungsten jigs, they're way denser, way heavier than lead for the same size. So you can get this tiny profile and um, it's just way easier to fish. I think this plastic's called a, a dragonfly, but these are a new company called Frostbite and it's good so far, we haven't needed to use bait, and we got three crappies on the ice, so things are good, and uh, man, ice season is upon us. Here we go, he's on me. There we yes, go. Yes sir, number two. Oh man, we're eating good tonight. Blaine and I were thinking we were gonna eat Oh, another nice one. some deer sausage, right on. but we might not need to eat deer sausage because <laughs> we're crappies. Guys, this, this hole's loaded. I'm gonna fill my flasher, actually. Come on, baby. Yeah, see how it's charged up? I'm just gonna reel up quickly. Ooh, it's chasing fast. It's also easier to feel the bites when you're lifting, so I'm just gonna keep lifting it slowly. He's not charging as fast as I thought. I'm gonna hold it on spot right now. Three, two, got him. There we go! Hooked up! <laughs> Oh, there's a mark. There's a mark. They just cruise in and, and like I said before, every body of water kind of has their, their fish act a certain way. Sometimes they'll be cruising right under the ice. Sometimes they're bottom huggers and you kind of need to drop down. You said this lake, they're a couple feet off bottom? Typically, like, I mean, when I left them in the fall, they were like anywhere between like four to five feet off bottom. Yeah. And now it's like, the way it's looking, they're, they're, they're gonna have mud on their bellies like when we're bringing them up the hole. Yeah, so. this fish is, uh, probably gonna chow my jig in three, two, one. Uh, uh. Oh. Yes, sir. Better? I don't know. That was so much fun. Guys, you need to have a flasher. Like, you can see the jig, you can see the knot, you can see the crappie. Are we gonna eat that? Oh yeah, we're we'll eat that. That's we'll eat that. Baller, baby. I saw a little, saw a little drool dripping out of his mouth there. Like sorry if I'm making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's coming up. A bit better mark. Blaine, why do you like crappie fishing? Why do I like crappie fishing? And can, um, you, can you catch one during your explanation, please? It's because it's just such, such a hot and cold fish. Like sometimes they're going, they're, you can pattern them really, really well too. I mean, seasonal wise, like right now we're out in the basin, it's winter. Springtime, they move up shallow. You just, I like being able to crack the coda, their stages and where exactly they're gonna be in the lake. Like, I, that's just something I've always found fascinating and when you can put it together, it's pretty sweet. Wow, that was good. Sometimes you can't coax them too far off the bottom. I'm gonna stop it kind of two feet off the bottom and see what this fish does. See how he turned from green to red? Yeah, you want him changing colors. This one's charging fat. Oh, there's two fish there. Here we go. I'll be dropping here down. we go. Drop down in here. Yep. On. Get down, drop down, drop down. 
owed to uncut angling. We call this tag teaming crappies. That That's one, a little small. <laughs> that we're not gonna eat. <laughs> Gobbled wow, I've never seen one that small actually. Gone. <laughs> like no offense, like that, that's good. That means the lake's healthy. I like that. Here we go guys, here we go. Hooked up. Blaine's on the phone to this girlfriend, I'm smashing crappies. This one is gonna taste good in some oil. That is a good eating size fish. Blaine, it's been so long. Oh, it's a rock bass. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a rock bass. Hold him up, hold him up. Really? Give me the hero hold. Oh, this will be the thumbnail. Don't shake him. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Okay, we're good. We're not, oh, we're not gonna eat that? Oh, no. I, I, you eat them? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Oh, I was, gonna say, I was like, what? <laughs> oh, that was good. Oh, there's fish all over me, guys. All over me. I'm gonna lift this, and I'm probably gonna get chowed real quick. Here we go. Three, two, one. There's just constant fish moving through this whole lane's hole, hopping and. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's a bit better. This is a better fish. Oh yeah, that's an eater anyway. That's better. These aren't jumbos, but it's just good to catch some fish and get to eat some fish. Yes, sir. Lane's hooked up. Yeah. I worked so hard for this crappie. I don't care how big it is, I'm eating it. <laughs> no. I worked so hard for this thing. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> oh man, like that, I have more satisfaction out of this one crappie than the four I caught today. Hold them out. Like honestly, like this giant. Just kidding. Blaine worked hard for that one. I worked so hard for this. Like. Add them to the pile. Is it time to go, uh, is it time to go cook? I think it's time to go catch. We already caught. So it's time to cook. Disclaimer, Blaine would not eat a 16 inch crappie. <laughs> <laughs> we like. I feel horrible saying. No, no, no. 10 to 12 inches is like prime eating size. Yeah. Don't eat 14, 15 inches. They're old fish. <laughs> they can be like 20 years old. So, just so you, just a disclaimer before you you take oh. our jokes too much. Anyways, we're heading to the kitchen now. Amazing time on the ice, and now we're gonna eat them. Welcome back to the kitchen, Zirkin's kitchen. Today we are doing crappies, as you saw previously. We're gonna deep fry them. We're gonna toss them in Frank's hot sauce. This is crappie buffalo bites, and it's gonna be good. Yo, oh, yeah. Crappie's a little tougher to cut. They're uh, they're definitely tougher than a walleye. They're really bony, so don't expect quite as much meat, but you're gonna cut them kind of the same way. Cut behind the gill, and then you're just gonna run sideways along the spine. Bony, a lot of people like to use electrical knives, electric filleting knives. That's one slab, do the same thing to the other side. Nice. Crushed it, woo! So ribs. Ribs are pretty easy. You can see the ribs right there. I'm gonna run my knife right against the edge and I'm gonna kind of turn it up. See how I'm turning it? I'm gonna turn it up right under the edge. I'm just gonna kind of scoop it out just to save as much meat as possible. This is the lateral line. This is called the pin bone that runs right along the middle there. It's called pant legging it. So you can take your knife and you cut on either side of it. So the pin bones get smaller when you get to the tail. You can cut on either side of it. And essentially what you're doing is making a little pair of pants. That's why it's called pant legging it, or zippering or whatever. So right there, you have a little pair of pants. Can you get a shot of Judy right there? Judy, you excited for some fish? Judith. We're just finishing up cutting the fish. I am chopping some potatoes. We're gonna do some baked potatoes, or oven roasted potatoes, um, along with some sauteed peppers and mushrooms. The focus is the fish, so that's what we're gonna spend the most time showcasing and showing you guys how to do. Um, but for now, I'm cutting these baby potatoes in half, gonna put them seasoning, some oil on it, put them in the oven at 400, and get those in right away, because I think they take about an hour. Potatoes in the oven. Um, Blaine finished cutting up our fish, so here's the important part for this. I like to cut it up into little chunks, kind of like a couple inch cubes. So we're gonna take that, kind of like chunks that big. I'm gonna check it for, for bones now to double check if Blaine did a good job. Just like that, you gotta think like chicken nuggets. That's what we're gonna toss them like, so. This is pretty good, actually. Blaine did a really good Thanks, job. Thanks, Jay. Blaine did a great job. So we're just gonna cube it up, 
Once we cube it up, we're gonna throw in some breading. We'll show you that and then we'll uh, keep rolling. All right, this is the deal. Panko, this is like a Japanese style coating. It's super crispy, it's incredible. If you've not done panko on fish, you are missing out. Um, so that's what we're gonna use for our breading. Crispy is kind of key for this. We want it really crispy. This is gonna do the trick. There's a bowl full of panko. That's a bowl full. Step number one, Franks. It's important for this buffalo style. We're gonna just take a bottle of Franks, pour it out. Fish into the Franks. That's our bread, or that's our coating. So I'm gonna take a fork here, and I'm gonna get it all stirred up. And you would think this is really spicy. It's actually not gonna be that spicy. Anytime you cook, it just takes the heat away. Don't think that this is gonna be some crazy hot food. I know lots of people that don't like spicy food, but they like Frank's fish. It just, it almost turns into a sweetness once you deep fry it. Got these fish nuggets rocking. Pretty simple. I'm gonna make a mess of this kitchen. This is the deal. Panko, you, you gotta use panko. Like, if you've not done fish with panko, what is, what's going on in your life? We got some veggies to saute. We were just gonna pour some oil in. Oil is key. We're not pan frying, we are deep frying. Ooh. So we want that submerged in that good canola oil goodness. There's different ways to kind of test the temperature because you don't want to just dump the fish in and not know. I normally just drop some breading in once it starts bubbling, then it's good to go. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Just gonna check on them taters. Looking good, tough to multitask, but it's looking good. Fish waiting to hit the oil, which will soon be good. Sprinkle it in. You can see how it's starting to bubble a little bit, it's getting close. Almost there. Catch your release in the grease. Yeah, buddy! We're now at Blaine's part of the meal. Beans. Not just regular beans, bush beans. <laughs> The only thing about the panko, guys, is uh, a lot of that panko will peel off and get in the oil. Uh, this is looking good. I think Blaine's gonna switch to cooking duties, and oh, I'm yeah, gonna switch good. to slow-mo duties. Sweet. Alright, we're now lifting the last batch of fish out. Alright, we made a bit of a mess in the kitchen. Peppers, mushrooms sauteed, beans are looking mighty fine, potatoes are pretty much done. This is the last step. We are gonna get some margarine on the pan, and this is what makes the buffalo toss crappies, the buffalo toss crappies. Alright, Frank's is bubbling, we got our fish. We're gonna get this fish hidden. Oh the Frank's. my goodness. Oh geez. Big things are happening, guys. Big things are happening. Watch out, watch out, we're gonna do a little toss. This is what makes it the toss. Dude, that looks so good, man. It's a bit of a sloppy mess, but it is a delicious sloppy mess. Look at that. There's a lot of batter in there, but that's like buffalo wings right there. Boneless buffalo crappie wings. We're gonna pull the rest of our stuff, we're gonna put a plate together, and we're gonna devour this. You got your beans, you got your taters, got your mushrooms and peppers, last but not least, freshly caught crappies. That right there is how you catch and cook. Huge shout out to Blaine for finding the crappies and for doing some cooking. And it was kind of a group effort, but uh, we're gonna say grace. We're gonna enjoy some amazing food and we're gonna plan our next ice fishing trip. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow Blaine on Instagram. We'll see you next time.